think we have a rational expression and we have this other piece here uh, and it looks like it's we have a restricted value at x equals 1 because we're going to end up dividing by 0 so we end up with 0 over 0 and so for that point we're going to plug in x equals for x equals 1 we're going to plug in y equals 3 so let's see what this graph looks like now it's kind of hard to figure out what this looks like it's either an asymptote or whole at x equals 1. So let's factor that first. Okay, so let's factor that. So we're going to, I'll do that in red actually. So let's factor that. So we get f of x equals, this is going to be, well, I'm going to do it off to the side here. So we're going to x plus 1, x minus 1, divided by x minus 1. Oh, those cancel. So that's definitely a whole at that point. And so we're going to, our piecewise function can look like this. Okay, so it's going to be x plus 1, and that's for x not equal to 1, and then it's going to be x equals 3, okay, for x equal to 1. So let's plug that point in. 1, 3 is that coordinate here. And the other part of the graph is going to be x plus 1. So it's going to go through 1, have a slope of 1. So it's going to have a slope like that. Okay, and as I go through here, I'm going to have an undefined point or a hole at x equals 1. And I'm going to just keep going through. Okay, so there's my graph. I've graphed into the two pieces. The two pieces represent a straight line with a hole. And where the hole is, we get this jump, this continuity, and it jumps up to y equals 3. Okay, and that's perfectly fine. It's still a, it's not a, it's still a function, but it's, uh, it has what we call a discontinu discontinuity to it. It goes here and then jumps and then jumps back. Okay, so it's what we call a discontinuous function. But that's it. that's how we that's what it looks like. We're gonna we graph those two parts to it. Okay, so last one here, we're gonna graph this absolute value parabola. Uh, and let's see, we got to come up with the pieces ourselves here. So. When we graph this, we have our positive and negative pieces. Okay, so our positive piece, I'm going to do red. The positive version of this is going to be x squared plus 5x plus 3 plus 3. So I'm just going to write it as plus 6. And we have to kind of figure out the domain of that. Okay, so I have to figure out where this is equal to 0. Hmm. Okay, well, let's, before we do that, I'm just going to write out the rest of this function. I'm going to have the negative version of this. It's going to be negative x squared minus 5x minus 3 plus 3. Well, that's going to be that. Okay, so the key then is I really need to figure out where this is equal to 0. Where is this, this absolute value part equal to 0? So I'm going to work down, maybe I'll work down here. So I need to know where this x squared plus 5x plus 3 is equals zero. Okay, well, I'm going to need to solve this. Well, I'm going to use a quadratic formula. x squared is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of 25 minus 4 times a times c. Okay, so there it is. And then I'm going to divide by 2a. And that's equal to my x. And that's when it's equal to zero. So it's equal to 0 at x equals, so negative 5 plus minus uh, 20 square root 13 over 2. Okay, so that's going to be my domain. So part of this domain, I'm going to be above the x-axis. Part of this domain, I'm going to be below the x-axis. So this is a parabola. So this parabola is facing up. So I'm going to establish my domain in this way. Okay, so this is going to be some parabola. It's going to look something like that. And I know that this is going to be negative 5 plus root 13 over 2. And this is going to be negative 5 minus root 13 over 2. And I know that this section in here, this section in here is going to be my negative. Okay, that's going to be the negative domain. So the domain that I, where I flip it is going to be between in between those zeros. So I'm going to go negative 5 minus root 13 over 2. Okay, so x has to be greater than that, and it has to be less than 
negative 5 plus root 13 all over 2. So that's the domain of the negative part. The domain of the positive part is going to be this domain where it's above the x-axis. So where this inside function, again, we're, we're just looking at the inside because that's what establishes our positive and negative versions. It's going to be when x is less than or equal to negative 5 minus root 13 over 2 or where x is greater than negative 5 plus root 13 over 2 greater than or equal to. And if you're wondering where the equal to goes, the equal to can go here or down here. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure you don't put it on both. Okay, so what's this graph going to look like? Well, I kind of need to know approximately where those coordinates are. Okay, so when x is equal to when x is equal to negative 5, so negative 5 minus square root 13 divided by 2, that's going to be approximately 4.3, somewhere around there. Okay, so I'm going to just have to move this over just a little bit. Let's move this up here, maybe shrink that down a little bit so I can squeeze it in. Okay, so there's the domain. I can't quite squeeze that in, but I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, so the positive version is going to be where negative 4.3, somewhere around there, y would be equal to 3. Okay, when I plug it into that equation, it's going to look like that. And then the negative version of that, so the negative 5 plus square root 13, is negative 0.7 about. So negative 0.7 is approximately about here. Y is equal to 3, so the graph's going to go up like that. Okay, and then for the negative version, okay, I'm going to plug it into that. Uh, it looks like my vertex is going to be at negative 2.5. Negative 2 it's halfway in between here. Okay, so when I plug in negative 2.5 into there, I'm going to get 6.25. So the vertex of that graph is going to be negative 0.25, 6.25 right about there. Okay, so I'm just going to do the table of values here, x, y, so negative 2.5, positive 6.25, and I got that from the green part because it's in that domain. So it's going to then go up and down, and it's going to meet at those points there. So that's what the graph of that absolute value function is going to look like. I need to break it into its parts, okay, the positive part, the negative part. And the, the domain is going to be based on where the inside function is equal to zero. I'm just going to highlight that. So this is how I establish the domain of the positive and negative parts of that.